wonderful. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, so thanks for being here, Kirk. And um, I can tell you, I am really so happy that I managed to grab hold of him. Uh, it's a long story there, but I, I shan't spend too much time over there. So basically, Kirk has over 20 years experience as a senior leader in finance at various global listed, globally listed companies across technology, retail, semiconductor, education, and the art industry. Hmm, interesting, right? And has held regional remits covering the Asia Pacific um, and Japan markets. His core expertise lies in the specialized areas of accounting, compliance, budgetary control, forecasting, as well as the end-to-end -end financial management. Now on the business front, which got me really excited, he plays a pivotal role in strategy formulation and also new markets penetration. Wow, there's so many choices that's uh, available, but it's interesting to hear how he basically assess each of the choices, stakeholder management, and also he helps in shaping the next generation of finance leaders in the organization. I think if a lot of organizations have leaders like you doing that, uh, we will already be in a very good place. So Kirk holds a bachelor's degree in accounting from NTU and is currently completing his executive studies in business admin, not just in Singapore, right? I think, uh, yeah. So at least I'm aware of that. So today he's going to share with us his reflection on his career transition and share his story. All right. So Kirk, over to you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for having me. I've known Eileen for quite a few years already, right? Very. <laughs> yes, yes. Many, uh, many, and, many. <laughs> yeah. So she, she is also part of my uh, career transition story, actually. Yes. Um, yeah. So, so I mean, uh, when, uh, when Eileen um, asked me to provide some uh, insights or my experiences, right, to, uh, to, to uh, an audience like yourself, so I uh, I didn't hesitate because I think it's uh, it's it's something that um, you know it, w once you have your personal experiences you also would like to share with others right uh, that we can also learn from each other so I think it's something the, that I I think everyone should uh, hopefully can also contribute back at some point <laughs> in in your career right so just to share with you a little bit about um, mm. the companies I work for uh, they are pretty diverse. Um, Yes, you know, some, some I would say are opportunities, right? Some are deliberate, uh, but, uh, but, but yeah. So anyway, so just, just to summarize a little bit, right? I have more than 25 years of uh, career experience working with different companies, nine companies actually, wow. right? I, I counted uh, once, once I did the slide, right? It's nine companies. And I've also gone through different industries, about eight industries. Mm. Uh, and then within the different companies and industries, I've also gone through about 11 roles. Wow. Right. Okay. So I, I think every role in a company, right? Uh, I think as uh, I mentioned also just now, whether you are a manager or interview contributor, right? That's a different role, mm -hmm. right? It takes a different skill set. So those are all experiences that we should also uh, acknowledge and right. also see what we can, uh, where we can uh, learn uh, from those experiences as well. Then at the same time, right, um, I know we have a diverse audience, right? Uh, we all go through different business cycles mm. uh, in our lives. Uh, different companies have different situations. So I've gone through companies with, uh, that's gone through uh, M&A. Uh, I've also been uh, part of a restructuring mm -hmm. organization. So, uh, right, where jobs are in impacted. Then also uh, management buyouts, right? So also things uh, change. Then also, uh, there are sometimes you would also go in companies whereby you think they are very stable, <laughs> but for whatever reason, right, you get into situations whereby it's unforeseen and then uh, they liquidate, right? So all these are various experiences that I have ex uh, encountered during my uh, 25 years of uh, in my mm. career. Uh, what it also actually means is that uh, some things we cannot foresee, uh, some things we can be prepared, we can plan, uh, but at the at the onset is you know in, in during career we just take it as a journey, all right. Everything is an experience that we want to learn from. So at the same time, while all this is happening, right? Of course, uh, 
you know, work and life cannot uh, separate, right? We always, you know, life, uh, our family life or uh, different circumstances, right? Always uh, is part of part of work as well. Yeah. So that's why I call it work-life uh, priorities. So during this 25 years, right, I was also very busy, right, establishing a family, right? Mm. So I am actually married and uh, doing, yeah, so I have six kids. Yeah, you are, you are the only speaker I've come across that has six kids. So everyone, please join me to give, you know, a round of applause. Thanks for contributing to Singapore's population. <laughs> yes, try my best, try my best. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. So so through through all these uh, experiences, there are some takeaways, of course, right? Yeah. That I would like to share with all of you, right? Um, I I know that some of us are currently in uh we are we are employed, right? Mm. Some of you are thinking of transitioning, okay? Uh, but there are some of us who are in transition as well for um, right? Due to whatever circumstances, okay. So I have gone through all these stages in my career, right? So I would like to maybe share a little bit of reflection and typically how we should uh, look at things uh, during all these different stages mm. in our careers. Okay. Nice. So I would call it, uh, what I would call it my ABC on career transition. Wow. Okay, <laughs> my uh, ABC on career transition. Uh, nowadays, we try to have all these uh, acronyms, right? Like yes. People can remember, right? Yes. Our career will spend probably, you know, 20, 30, 40, 40 years right now, right? Yeah. And uh, most of the time, we hopefully, right, we are employed or doing something uh, productive, mm -hmm. okay? So, but the problem is when we are in a situation where, where we are employed, right? Then sometimes we kind of forget about certain things that we need to do, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, which is which I call it always, right? Mm. Uh, during our career, when we employed. So these are things that can prepare us better if we are planning for a career transition or if we, for whatever circumstances, we get into a situation whereby we are forced to transition, mm. right? So all these things uh, for myself, right? I, I, I have also gone into this cycle whereby we went during, uh, once we are employed, right? We kind of focus so much on our career, mm. on our existing positions and, 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 and jobs. We kind of tend to forget some of these things that we should be doing to prepare us during our career. So one of these things that um, I think typically uh, for myself at least, right, is always constantly evaluate. So we do, you know, uh, in, our, in our employment, right, we always mm. do uh, performance evaluations, right, something on a half yearly basis, uh, sometimes on yearly basis. Some companies now, they do quarterly, right? But we don't really evaluate our own uh, priorities, our own situations, right? Where are we in terms of our career? Where where, where are we in terms of our brand story, mm. right? Um, we, we tend to focus a lot on um, the existing job that we have, That's true. right? Yeah. So we kind of forget a little bit about also, we need to also constantly evaluate ourselves, right? Whether, yeah. how are we doing? Are we... Are we motivated in our current role? Uh, what is what is our passion in our life? What are our mm -hmm. priorities, right? So those are the things that um, I, I, I I try always to at least um, through my experiences, right? I try to always uh, keep myself uh, right looking at uh, always looking at what are my priorities. Mm -hmm. So some some of us may be in the early career, uh, some of us may be in mid career, some of us could be at the end of our our career, right? Um, but we always have to focus on uh, what our priority is. So like right now for myself, right, uh, I'm already 25 years into my career. So the question is, okay, so what is what is next for the next, what, five years, next 10 years, mm. right? Are my priorities the same uh, when you may be in the beginning of a career or in a mid-career, right? So some of us, uh, we may have very young kids, right? Uh, so you have to always take into consideration, right? How do we evaluate ourselves in terms of our our work and our life? Mm. Uh, so this thing, uh, I'm also a culprit of it, right? <laughs> okay, constantly we we always wait until uh, something happens, then we try to update our CV. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I think um, sometimes it's always good, always right, to constantly update what we are doing, um, and also what uh, update our CV, right? So mm. we are also constantly uh, evaluating ourselves. Right. Once we 
put into something right in writing then we are also evaluating ourselves so like right now uh because i've been invited to do this talk right mm. all right do this sharing i'm also hey <laughs> looking at uh reflecting upon hey, what are what's my career how has been transitioned so all these things also help us to be more prepared right uh yes. for the uh for the unknown uh sometimes uh you know now the economy is very um Things things happen very very quickly. Uh, changes might happen, so we will not know. So we should be always prepared. Just big thing about networking, right? Uh, you know, there are people telling you know telling me, oh, you know, I don't really like networking. Uh, networking is not my thing because it's not genuine, right? Um, and sometimes uh, there are also people who my friends will tell me, oh, you know, they are they are more introverted. Mm. Uh, they can't network, right? Uh, but actually, um, networking is not only about looking for the next role right or looking for a, a job right uh, we think it's making friends okay uh, we, we we all know we can't do things alone so when i reflect upon my whole career transition right mm. actually out of the nine roles i have right seven of them are actually through referral of friends or to recruiters so recruits also you know it, it recruiters don't just look for you just because you are there, you know, you also have to constantly uh, network with them. Yeah. Right. So some of the roles that I have also, um, even during my transition, right, some of the things that I've done uh, because um, I, I couldn't find the perfect job, right. Um, I've also worked on uh, some projects, mm -hmm. right, uh, to help some companies um, to maybe uh, some process improvements. And, and those are all to network. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, and also sometimes we, you just never know, all right, when something can, uh, somebody uh, will be able to help you uh, to look for a uh, next opportunity, right? So I think networking is, is really very important for me. Uh, I, the, the, the longer I have in, um, in my career, right, the more I realize that uh, I can't do it alone. So find ways and opportunity to, to join something right uh, even something social uh open a social circle and for those of us who are actually working right we should always find a time right to to meet up with our friends meet up with uh, ex-colleagues meet up with um um mentors mm. ex-managers um go to networking events right um yeah and anything to just keep in touch right because you will never know when um when you will you will some of this came up so i was just actually uh talking to a good friend of mine right so he actually moved to the uk um just for for close to six years right and then he decided to come into singapore right and um and how he got how he got back to singapore right is that he actually somehow um connected back with a mentor or a manager 20 years ago mm -hmm. okay and uh, somehow they connected and then they talked about it and uh and oh and he happened to have an opportunity in singapore and basically he said okay i i, I got some opportunity why don't you just uh if, if everything goes well you just come to singapore mm. right so all these things can happen um you will just never know yeah okay yeah I think for introverts, um, when it comes to networking, it is basically, you know, you can go in there and listen first. <laughs> and then I think the, the chatty ones would love to have an audience. <laughs> you can be their audience. <laughs> yeah. For those of us who are introverted, I think, uh, again, right, something is not, you know, you, 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 it's not some, it, it's sometimes it's just the one-on-ones, mm -hmm. right? You don't have to go to big events. Right. Uh, just find somebody that you are familiar with, and mm. you, know, you never know. We we always have to invest in our own career. I've also realized, right, the our companies don't prepare us for our next job. Okay, so for those of us who are thinking of transitioning to a next uh, to a different industry or even to a to a different role, right? You you realize we all realize that the companies that we are working for now, they will not train us for your our next role, right? We have to find ways to prepare ourselves for the next role or our next career transition, right? So like for myself, I, I also learned through the hard way, right? So I'm currently doing a uh, 
executive uh, course, right, to prepare for uh, general management. Yeah, that's something I always wanted to do, right? But, um, but you know, we we are always stuck in our own uh, comfort zone, right? Say, oh, we are we are very familiar with what we're doing right now. For us to try to do something different is very difficult, right? So we have the desire, right? But we don't we don't take it seriously and put it into action, right? So I've decided now to invest in myself, right? So that if an opportunity comes in for the next role in general management, I have the learning, I have the knowledge, and also to demonstrate to my next employer that mm. I have invested in my own transition, and I'm willing, and I'm prepared to take up the next transition, right? Because I have spent time and energy and even money on it. Mm. I think that th- this is something uh, you know. It's a, it's really a brand story, right? It that is. You, that it's very convincing to 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 your potential employers, right? Yeah, that that's, you are. that's another bucket itself, right? Talking about uh, investing in yourself. There's a lot of stories that we can actually add to that. How do I invest in myself? Oh, a few things here and there. Sometimes we take a career break. That could also be an investment because the cost is your salary. So people who take gap years, for example, no pay leave. Um, Of late, I, I hear a lot of people going on no pay leave too. And wow, that's a huge sacrifice. Yes, yes. And then, and then the thing is that uh, the... I've also experienced that a lot of uh, people in the younger generation, right? They are also doing this. They are actually investing in their own careers. Mm. Uh, they just for reference, right? The people in my course right now, right? Mm. Half of them are, are pretty young professionals. Half of them are self-funded, mm. right? Not company funded. Wow. So they they are willing to invest in their own wow. careers. Okay, then, uh, then the B is uh, always, we talk a little bit about uh, before our transition, right? So th- for those of us who, um, right, we, we all experience this during our careers, right? Mm. That we are thinking about transitioning, right? For whatever reason. <laughs> okay. Yes. So I think before we, we do that again, right? We have to really look at, okay, what are our priorities? What is something that motivates us? Uh, what do we really find? In terms of our our what 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 makes us happy and what makes us um uh, want to go to work every day, right? So those I think we have to evaluate constantly, but very critically when we are in a situation whereby sometimes right we we experience difficulties in our current job, we experience difficulties in our current role, right? Mm. Right. We mm. we need to really uh think about what our priorities, and never rush into something, right? Always think about what we want to do, right? Always think about um, um, whether, you know, you already, uh, I, I would say don't get ahead of ourselves, right? Don't, don't because of circumstances, right? We, we, we get into a situation whereby we quit without a job, mm. Mm. right? I think it's always better to be, to be safe, uh, always better to, um, give ourselves uh, time and give ourselves um, uh, right resources to better uh, review what are our next opportunities and next, uh, next career transition. Very, very true. I've come across contacts who do that as well. Yeah. And, and I think it's not a question of, uh, I, I think it's a, sorry, it's a question of perspective. Probably in their, from their position, they are thinking I'm stuck. So I had, no choice. <laughs> yeah, perhaps, I mean, so, so we're, we're, we're not judging, but, but I think if you can, then, then that's a pretty good advice. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Okay. And then for some of us, uh, who are doing, who are currently in transition, right. Okay. Whether you are looking for your next uh, opportunity, mm-hmm. right. Next role. I think what we all need, um, at, at all, always is confidence in ourselves and also the courage. Mm. Okay. Um, I, I have gone through, um, transitions for, for close a year before. Okay. Um, I think most importantly is we have to, uh, stay focused. Okay. Uh, be purposeful, basically, you know, using the time, our time well, right. Mm. Uh, doing things. So for example, what I, what I did during my one year of transition is that, uh, and it was actually it was uh, during the COVID time. I basically 
uh, connected with uh, connected with friends. Okay, I went on a uh, health regime, learn tennis, all right, uh, do something that uh, that can establish good health and good habits. Um, but then also at the same time, I of course you know every week, every uh, I would I would tell myself, okay, I have to connect with how many people, maybe meet with two friends, send out uh, how many resumes, okay, <laughs> update my CVs, okay, every every week. Of course, it's not it's not easy, right? Because yeah. um, you can do it for a month, you can do it for two months, right? But to 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 do it for a prolonged period, right? You really have to stay very focused. And not be discouraged during the that period as well. You know, I, um, I've also did, uh, some online courses. Mm. Okay, uh, you know things that I've always wanted to learn but I never got in, uh, n- never got a chance to learn, right? Um, I, I I went to take some courses as well. So those are the things that um I think we we really I mean for myself right, it's important to keep ourselves uh, healthy also to maintain a good uh, mental state. And of course, uh, always be confident of ourselves, right? Um, at the end of the day, I think after all these 25 years right, of career transition, right, uh, in my career, I think the, the person who can tell ourselves, right, our own abilities, right, is really ourselves, right? Mm-hmm. We have to derive value, right? Not from our employers or not from people outside of us, right? We have to divide, we have to, make sure that we are confident in ourselves or our, or our own abilities, right? That whatever we contribute to the job, right, is, is what I contribute. And, and, not, and it's not dependent on uh, our employers or somebody telling us. And then always be being true, right? Uh, being true to ourselves, right? So I know there is a lot of uh, talk about this word authenticity, right? Be authentic. Um, I think being authentic is really about uh, accepting that we have successes, and then also accepting that there are failures, mm. right? Everybody in some point in our career, right, uh, have failed, right? We, some of us, right, uh, uh, have experienced uh, disappointments, right, challenges at work, uh, restructuring, retrenchments, um, difficult situations, right? But at the end of the day, these are all a journey, it's part of a journey, right? I mean, I've, I've learned to accept uh, certain things that are mm. beyond our control. Right. And it's not really because of my own abilities, right? It's just circumstances. So I think to stay focused, to be confident and courageous in times of uh, in these difficult moments, I think that's very important. Yeah. And some and definitely opportunity will come. Definitely um something will come up. Some and and and, and, and yeah, just stay confident and courageous. Yeah, I think I like that part about authenticity because um when we are kind of crumbling under pressure and uh, it appears weak to others right but i but we can always focus on the recovery because today you're not like that so we may take a little longer but i really like that part i know there were some questions being sent uh earlier yeah (laughs) right so i i so i also just uh maybe give some perspective on uh on those uh, questions that were sent by 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 some of the participants. Yeah, thank you so much for doing it. I, I, I saw that you put in an effort to give your POV. <laughs> yeah, my POV, correct, correct. Yeah, correct I'm correct. gonna count off and say thank you. So the first question was, how do I discover my career brand? Mm. Yeah, I think it's really what you value most, what is your passion, right? Mm. Um, I, I, I think uh, at the end of the day, uh, it's really about yourself, right? Mm. Re- really about how you, how you, what you value most. Yeah. Um, yeah. N- nothing else. And also the nine methods that I've, I've taught, you know, uh, maybe that can give you some clue. I think for some people, they are very clear about what they want. To them, it's like, it's a consistent thing. They already know what they want. But then for others, they may not know what they want. And so it's a good place to start. Yeah, I think it's a good place to start. I would also just add one more to say that um, if you have people that you can ask, perhaps they can give you feedback. Like, where do you see my brand? Right. Yeah. That's one clue. (laughs) That's right. That's right. What draws people to my story? 
I think just being very genuine, right? Very sincere about about yourself. Hmm. Right. Of course, using the nine methods and all, right? Um, yeah. I mean, people like story. People like a connection. So just be genuine. Hmm. Perhaps the the mistake, common mistake people do is I only tell you the good bits, so they leave out the the not so good bits. So the not so good bits, okay. The extreme, the extreme could be I keep talking about the not so good bits, and I end up complaining. Yeah. So after a while, it's it's a bit draining on the listener as well. So I think it's um it's it's a balancing game like. Too much of a good thing is not so good. Too much of a bad thing is even worse. But, but I, I, I would say choose a comfortable area that you don't mind being a little more transparent and, and share. Like I exposed myself just now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Back to you. <laughs> Okay, then uh, how to show the advantage of age in my career branding? Mm. Um, I, yeah, I think, you know, constantly uh, we need to evaluate ourselves, right? Self-awareness is very important, right? Uh, especially for those of us who have a longer career, right? I think what they're looking for is that there is all, there is self-awareness, right? Uh, always willing to learn. And I think humility, right? I think humility is very important, right? That um, as as we age, uh, mm. we right. The more I learn, the more I know I don't know, right? So I yeah. think it's just to accept that uh, we can't do things alone. Uh, we don't know everything. Uh, we all have our fair share of uh, strengths and weaknesses. That's so cool. to just be very uh, candid you, about. You got a comment here. It says lifelong learning and commit to self. Yep, definitely, definitely. So I think if we were to compare with those who are early career, so let's let's draw a very extreme example. What do we have that they don't have? I think the obvious one is experience, right? And 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 so how do we demonstrate that? We can demonstrate by talking about very basically talk about similarities and differences, and and that's where you would have some advantage. So. You can always say, I've been in this role for quite a while. I've seen three types of people doing that role, right? Uh, type A is this, type B is this, type C is this. And that's your point of view. It's not saying that that's like, you know, how the world should think, uh, untested. <laughs> Maybe that will help. I don't know. I'm just thinking, yeah, that's a, that's a cool question though. Yeah, maybe just also to add one more point is mm. that... Um, at the end of the day, right, you know, it's about really uh, building how we deal with uh, we, the people, deal with people. At the end of the day, it's just how do we deal with uh, our co-workers? Mm. Mm. I think hopefully through, through age, right, we also know how to read people, how to, uh, how to deal with uh, different, uh, different uh, situations with people and how to get the best of people, you know. I mm. think that's something also I think uh, age can help us. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. Personal cool. coaching. I think I saw a chat, right? Personal coaching, coaching others. Ah, yes. Yes, that's that's true. Coaching others makes makes Margaret realize that the common issues people have and how she can help them. Wonderful. Ooh. Great. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. How to create a brand story when I have no experience in new field work? Mm. Right. I think it's important, right? Focus on uh, attitudes, right? Uh, your behavioral competencies, which a lot of the um, a lot of companies they kind of uh, they they are trying to find this magic bullet, right? Mm. Right. They can they can find technical competencies, but it, it's very hard to realize what are what are your attitudes and what are your behavioral competencies. Yep. Right. And then of course, as I mentioned, right, demonstrate the commitment to acquire the new skill needed. Hmm. Right. How how am I invested yeah. in uh, trying to find ex find trying to be prepared for the new field work? Uh 
how do I present the story without sounding cliche or unauthentic? Mm. Right. I think again, right, is is just uh, accepting successes and failures. Um, I think sometimes also can, you know we can also once we build up the 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 story, the brand story, right? Only yes. sharing with uh people we know, right? And then they can they they will be the best judge, right? Friends that we know mm. to 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 know that whether we are sounding cliche or unauthentic. Yeah. Yeah, I think I like that. Yeah, feedback is important. Yay! Yes, feedback. That's right. Ah, network and feedback. Network. <laughs> Don't do things alone. <laughs> Don't do things alone. Ah, yes, that's in line with your theme. I like that. Hey, okay, this co-creation, man. <laughs> Alright, thanks. Great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. And then how to craft a career brand story when I'm when I have been in a different industry of my career. Mm. So again, right, um key learnings in career transitions, right? So we have to act I mean, you have to learn something, right? And you have to demonstrate that you have learned something, right? So people who, who have been in different industries, right, they are definitely more adaptable, right? Adaptability mm. and mm. there's a certain resilience. So I mean, to me, these are the two things that I I I, I would uh, I would highlight. Again, I, it's a journey, right? So every every change or everything that you do differently, mm. there there is always some learning, right? So yeah. Uh yes. So there are certain um. So cool. Uh, yeah, I mean Microsoft Power BI is basically a uh, a uh, a very powerful uh, analytical tool, mm. right? So, so uh, we talk about data, uh, yeah. big data, right? How to how to story tell, yeah, story tell, visualize, storytelling in 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 num- with numbers and data. Mm. Uh, so those those are the I would say the 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 the, the future, right? Cool. Of uh, of, of the industries, right? All companies want that. All companies are hiring data people, but uh, there are certain skill sets uh, in softwares. Uh, I think uh, that's the trend, okay. right? Um, yeah. So, so even um, uh, ERP certifications, right? Mm. Uh, SAP, uh, Oracle, uh, those are all very good um, uh, skill set to have. Mm. Right? Are, are you also building the this this particular skill set in your team and your next generation? Yes, 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 definitely. I mean, we are focusing on uh, uh, digital transformations, mm. right? Uh, um, uh, yeah, certifications in uh, in in the in the latest digital tools. Uh, yeah, yeah, data storytelling, visualization. Yeah, exactly. Okay. okay. Yeah, so those are things that are key. Yeah. You're on the right track, then. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, you, I mean, uh, everybody finds. Uh, you know, you you should. Right, find some of the some of the things that are, are actually the 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 future, mm. right? In your perspective, respective uh, uh functions, and uh, and then uh, see what you can do to what we can all do to upgrade ourselves, right? To so it never it is never uh it doesn't never harms that to learn something new. Yeah. Right. Wow. I have a three year career gap without much progression with a time frame. What story can I craft? Right. Right. I think uh the resilience, uh how how you have been keeping yourself positive and engaged. Okay. Right. I, I think that is that is important, right? Uh what 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 you have been doing. Mm. Uh, that's essential. Yeah. Yeah. That's essential, lah, you know. Mm. I would say yes. that um, during the gap year, um, we are constantly doing some things. And if we can break it down into tasks, you know, the items that we do, um, right down to the very bare basics, like we are doing, you know, uh, consolidating, we are doing counting, we are doing organizing, we are communicating. If we focus a lot on transferable skills, I think that would that's a that's a given, right? I mean, it it would be good to do two things, perhaps, perhaps. One is discover new transferable skills, or use that gap year to confirm and affirm 
these are the skills which I'm I, I still got it for example <laughs> like cracking a joke hey I still got yeah. it you know connecting with people hey I still got it uh, I'm able to still communicating communicate deliver a message uh, presentation skills can be also required in a non-work environment so Right. But keeping yourself positive, I think, yeah, that's the mindset and all. Cool. Very nice. Yeah. Mm. I think there's a question here, Ivy. Uh, um, mm. How do we transit our story to future employers? Mm. So, connecting. So, basically, how do you transit your story to future employers? You apply that nine methods, the nine methods, right? But starting from the right first. So later I can uh, I, I can do a little recap uh, to show the show the steps. Yeah. That's to that's to know, right? Yeah. Yep. That's to know. Okay, can back end roles like the sales support executive be branded into my story? <laughs> Why not? You know, whether it's a back-end role, whether it's a front-end role, whether yes. it's... Uh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> every role is an experience. Uh, every role is needed in a company, right? It's part of our journey. So uh, again, right, it's, it's how we have, what we have learned, mm. gained through that, 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 that role that experience. Mm. I really yeah. like that, yeah. I, I, I think, you know, the back-end role will fit in very nicely with that method too. Right, front office, or is it method three? Front office, mid office, and back office. Yay. Yeah, and, and, and sometimes we we under we underestimate our own contribution to mm. to to the workings of the company, you know, to the mm. success of the company. Mm. So I think it's always good to find out to reflect, right? Okay, what what how my role contributes and add value to uh, to the company. Mm. So those those are those are very critical to to also tell ourselves, right, motivate ourselves that we are we are more important than we think we are. Mm. But again, don't don't let the company define who you are, right? You have to define yourself. I think everyone should work for you. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, <Really>? serious? <laughs> yeah. You have such an open mindset. <laughs> Which is unusual for a finance person though. <laughs> unusual, is it? Yeah. Unusual. You always just counting dollars and cents and bottom line <laughs> and uh, very mercenary and uh, very commercial <laughs> and and right and and compliant isn't it yes well, yes yes you have to say <laughs> yes you have to say yes <laughs> i like what you say because it triggered me to think of that that we underestimate or we ignore the little things that we do which is actually not in your job scope but you do have things to say and that could give you some you know, avenue to explore further, talk about it. Yeah. So maybe majority of your work also involve work from other departments. Maybe. Right? But yeah. what percentage? Yeah. yeah, that's cool, man. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Margaret, we just we just filled a L and D position. Ayo! Ayo, <laughs> Kirk, you must come earlier and talk. <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. Oh. Uh, it's okay. We'll, we'll, uh, there's always other opportunities. Yeah, everybody connect with Kirk, man. I tell you, he'll be a good manager. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay. Okay. okay uh, two, just two more questions. Two mm. more questions. Mm. Uh, okay, what are the pitfalls of career transition? Mm -hmm. Um, I think choosing money over passion, mm -hmm. right? Uh, not making or sticking to a plan. So if your priorities, but you decide to somehow throw it out the window, mm. right? Uh, failing to network, which means you don't really know, you 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 you, you don't network. Mm. You, you find out about, you know, you don't you don't ask for advice, right? You just mm. jump into it, mm. and then of course self doubt lah. Huh? Yeah. Mm. So those are the things I would think is uh the. Yeah, there are pitfalls for when you're thinking of a transition. Yeah. 
I think I like that. Um, the first one, I can't comment very much about choosing money over passion <laughs> because, you know, I, I don't know how you do it. You've got six kids and don't choose money, but you choose passion. Wow. Cook. talk to you. You know, you have a secret formula somewhere we need to unlock, man. We really need to do. But, I mean, seriously, I, that, that's, that's very subjective. Um, but I, I think I know where you're coming from. Perhaps what you're saying is, you know, the thing that's going to last longer is really your passion. Because you don't know where that, auto, that energy comes from. It's from within. And money is exterior. It's as extrinsic kind of thing. But, hey, we are at different stages. We're not going to judge. You know, you know you. I think I like, I really, really like the second point where not making or sticking to a plan. Oh, I totally like that. I to uh, there, there is a question about... How do I craft my story if in my gap year, I'm just taking care of my aged, my aged mother? I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a perfect story. I mean, you don't have, there's no, I mean, you don't have to excuse, there's no excuses, right? I mean, you need to take care of somebody. Uh, I think it's perfectly fine. This, this is part of the, it's a story, right? Mm. That you prioritize your mm. mom. Mm. Yeah. I, I don't know what else. I mean, right? Just be, just be straightforward, right? I'll chime in to say, over and above yours, what you have mentioned. So yes, I'm with you. Uh, my take of this is, yeah, you know, it is what it is. So, the last method, method number nine. So, I don't know, Joanne, if you were here when I was sharing method number nine. The ninth method was, talk about your corporate mission in terms of the job front and talk about your personal mission, which is the home front. So, you could actually include that as part of your personal mission. We go through you know, different phases in our in our life beyond the career where, you know, at some point we want to accumulate wealth, right? Like the financial wealth. And then at some point we want to accumulate mental wealth. So there, there are people who seek happiness, right? Like I, I'm beyond that. I, I want to find meaning in my work and all that stuff. It's okay as long as we know that's happening. I think what's important is having said that, um, if we say we are at this phase where we are focusing on the personal mission because we are speaking in the context of I'm coming back to the industry so you have to draw a link back to the industry yes we, we get it that was that season in your life where you have to focus on the personal front but where does the corporate front so, so you can come from a perspective I got my personal front and I got my corporate front I have not forgotten my corporate front my corporate mission and which is where i am ready now i'm coming back but the i actually lose touch that means the old version of me is now gone no it's an improved version so it's up to you to tell me what's that improvement <laughs> sorry to interject yeah Kirk, <laughs> but you no, know no, me no, yeah no. always good go back to the nine nine uh nine <laughs> point right it's great <laughs> Okay, anyway, this is the last question. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, sorry, my answer may be a little bit uh, philosophical. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why you're here. <laughs> it's your POV, come on. <laughs> yeah. So when does anyone undergo a, a, a career transition? I think maybe the question is more like... Um, Okay, I, I would just say that uh, it, 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 we are constantly going through a career transition. Eh? Mm. Even if, if right now, work, we are talking about um, my contribution, am I happy here, uh, change of priorities in our life, right? Uh, all, all these things, um, I would just say entire life is a journey or right? a transition or end goal. So everything, it's a transition, right? You are mm. always going undergoing a transition, right? Mm. Uh, right. It, it doesn't have to be changing jobs, right? Um, changing roles, changing careers, right? All these, yes, but um, but constantly, we are always evaluating our priorities. We are always thinking about um, how we contributing. Are we learning something, right? So to me, 
um, mm. we are going through a transition every day. I think. Mm, I don't know. Mm. I think it's the version of yourself. Yeah. So you know, which version are we looking at, right? So what what you're saying is continuous improvement. Continuous improvement. Um, in in our talent space, we look at someone going through a career transition where there's a change in the career. So it, it could be you are you are being promoted from an individual contributor to a people manager capacity. So like rise the rank in the management capacity. Then it could be another one could be career transition, meaning to say I am changing my location of work. You know I've been working in Singapore and now I am gonna do the same role but in the Indonesian market, and and so that itself is a transition. That is. Geographical transition, but concerning your job. So, uh, but yeah, but I, 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 I like your philosophical reminder that we are always a work in progress. Yeah, the version of yourself. So nice. <laughs> yeah. Um. Thanks, Aline. I I think that's uh that's pretty much what I have today. Woo! Thank you so much. It's just a a question. Do you know anyone in MOE? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They 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 all want to tap into your contacts, you know. <laughs> right, right, right. So I so I work for international school. So basically, my contact is CPE, not MOE. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. Okay, Margaret yeah, yeah. says mature version, but still full of energy and enthusiasm. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. Thank you. Please join me. To thank Kurt.